We're down here in southern Utah and we have a mission to complete Hole in the Rock Trail. We're kind of interested to see how this whole trip goes because of the temperature that we're dealing with while we're out here. So there's going to be a little bit of a challenge with the heat. Hey, nice to meet you. How's it going? I'm Trevor. Trevor? Jesse. Nice to meet you. Go. Joe? Pleasure, man. Nice to meet you. We're headed down to Halls Crossing Marina. It's basically going to be our last stop for any provisions. We're going to fuel the trucks. We're going to make sure we're topped off on ice in the coolers and make sure we also get our permit for the area. This is a permitted area. And then from there, we're gonna head into the trail. So it's uh, 9.30, it's already almost 90 degrees. So it's gonna be a good day. Some of the things I'm, I'm nervous about with this trail, um, you know, getting into it, it's gonna be, you know, Clint and I know how difficult it can be. We, we, we certainly struggled our way through it the first time. Um, and so, you know, I think it's gonna be challenging for certain people that maybe don't have as much experience wheeling. Um, so we'll need to navigate that. And then also just the logistics component, you know, there's, there's fuel concerns, there's, you know, it's easy to get lost back in there. There's so many different routes. Can you still get a light on the dash? Like I'm not even getting a light on the dash. Uh, no, because the light comes on with a sensor in the T case. Pulling up to the first obstacle, of course, and there's no four low in my truck, so. After gutting this perfectly good actuator, we found out the issue was Will had his dash apart. A pin inside this uh, shifter switch got bent over. That's our issue. We got a little uh, lesson on how an actuator works on a fourth gen 4Runner, and the guys got their hands dirty for no reason. Um, I mean, it really just comes back to working as a team. Um, it, it may not seem like a big deal, but just having individuals spot you, um, thinking it's gonna be I mean, close to impossible to getting through these obstacles, and then you do it, and it's just so rewarding. Guys, that road is completely washed out with about a 15 foot drop on both sides. I'm gonna see if I can get an alternate route. We had a group that went ahead, and they're telling us we gotta turn around. I guess it was washed out like 15 feet on both sides. There's Hayden trying to get out right now. So we are headed back out the trail that we drove in. We're working our way down some of the obstacles right now that we already climbed up. But yeah, that, the road was just washed out, pretty much impassable unless you're on like a dirt bike or mountain bike or something of the sorts. So this is marked as Hole in the Rock original. So there is another route further to the east of us. So we are backtracking back out. We're gonna hit that other route and start working our way back into the trail on that route. So. so we go back on the highway. This is probably 15 minutes from here to here. Being that we took the wrong trail the first day, it really challenges us as far as time goes. We're gonna have to be a little bit more persistent oh, yeah. on staying moving. Um, coming into the next day and making sure that we have enough time to complete the trail and get back out and keep everyone on schedule and not take any more of anyone's time outside of our plan route for this trip. After diving into the wrong trail and spending a good bit of time on that, um, the real concern is, is the fuel consumption. You know, now uh, we're not really sure if we're gonna be able to make it through uh, the rest of the actual main trail itself, uh, you know, we were pushing it as it is, and, and so uh, fuel is going to be a real issue. Alex and I think we can make the Rincon Trailhead probably in a couple hours and we'll get down to the water and camp down there tonight. Ready, Jesse? I suppose. All right. 
at the end of the day, there really isn't an end goal for this trip other than to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Obviously, we really want to make it down to the end of the Rincon Trail and get to be down at the water. Um, it's really hot, so being able to cool off and hang out down there would be incredible, and it'd be nice to kind of check this trail off as far as its completion. But it's about being out, wheeling, hanging out with your friends. So this trail is actually built by Mormon pioneers. They were uh, trying to colonize the southeastern section of the territory. So this whole thing is hand cut. Um, they were using dynamite hand tools and they were bringing wagons and horses down this same trail that we're driving on today. This trail has a lot of heritage. It's, it's just an iconic trail that really everyone knows and it's, it's one of those bucket list trails for a lot of people, I'd say myself included, and it was fun to finally be able to get out and go do it. We definitely need to pay attention to fuel and water. And that's just a hair under three quarters of a tank, Kelly. If we need to, we can camp on this mesa. We just don't want to drop down into the other trail and get ourselves into a worse situation. This breeze, we don't this breeze to... feels amazing. It takes the edge off. We're about to see the. I mean, we can get shade going. It'll be a while until we lose the sun. I'm going to the lookout. <laughs> I almost had it. Look out. We're going to do it up here. And I said, look, look out. out. So ultimately, we cut our trip a little short. Uh, we didn't make it all the way through to Rincon. Uh, you know, fuel actually became the concern and time. Uh, and I think also at the same time, you know, people are a little tired. Uh, we've been wheeling all day, not easy wheeling, um, you know, pushing the limits for everybody. And so I think we, uh, you know, just need to call it quits because, uh, you know, we, we have a, f a few too many things working against us here, so. So I'm going to be behind Jesse in the Jeep. He's going to be in front, and then we're going to have Kelly and the two foreigners behind me, so it's easier to spot them. And then whoever wants to basically lead the second group, then we'll have the Tacomas and the Will Sparner in the back of these. So hopefully make good time and get to Lake Powell event. So we just found out that uh, Keaton was having a clunking sound, and we hopped underneath the truck, and one of the bolts on his sway bar attaching to his axle had came out. So right now we're working on getting this piece bent back into shape and getting a uh, pseudo bolt. We're gonna use some chicken wire and get this thing attached back to the truck and at least get him off the trail and back home, and then he can uh, source a new bolt and get it fixed the proper way. But this will definitely work for a trail fix. This is a tough obstacle for anybody that has, uh, you know, normal bumpers, not high clearance stuff, or very large tires. You really run the risk of, you know, damaging the body of the vehicle, uh, front or rear. And so it's interesting to see people try and navigate that now. Hey, Jesse, I changed my mind. I'm going to give it a shot. It was really cool to see everyone kind of adapt and overcome some of the challenges we got into on this trip. Some people had smaller expectations for what the obstacles were going to look like, and we definitely got into some bigger stuff than we had anticipated. So uh, everyone definitely stood up to the challenges and learned a lot on this trip, and we just powered through as a team, which was huge. I 
what I really like about these type of trips are just meeting new people, right? And just the camaraderie that, that comes from this, the relationships that come from this. That's, it's funny, I was just telling Zach on the way out here, I'm like, man, I feel like we could be friends with this crew forever. Like, you know what I mean? We just meshed and just had a great time. And to me, that's what, that's what this industry is about, right? It's these relationships and sitting out here by a fire and, and eating and, and just hanging out and, and just enjoying life. I mean, we all, you know, bust our tails throughout the week and, and being able to get out and relax with like-minded people is why I do what I do. No, the, the views, unbelievable, man. I can yeah. see why people say that this is a bucket list trip to be on and, and I know Zach and I are just super thankful that we got to be a part of it. Keep on climbing the gold and silver linings. Yes, I wonder.